Hi. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hi, this is Once to Watch Chef's Choice. I'm Abby Kenna, and today I'm joined by Brooke Alex. What's up? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm great. Just flew in from Nashville. I so know. You just got off the plane. Literally. Went to my Airbnb and then straight here. So we're just getting acquainted. I'm, <laughs> I'm like always so honored when people do that. This is like a crazy first stop in LA. Uh, uh, the perfect first stop. <laughs> <laughs> a chill one. Yeah. Yes. You've been here a couple times. Yeah. To this building? Well, to or this to building LA. in LA. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to LA a few times. Yes, I have. Um, yeah. I did like a semester here in college oh, cool. and like kind of lived here for a second during that time and then like have done writing trips a bunch. So yeah. yeah. How do you like it here? I like it more now that I have friends here to visit. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe because I feel like people answer me when I reach out to them more now because I've yeah. created like a name for myself I feel like in the beginning I really hated LA I hated the traffic I hated that nobody answered the door for me you mm -hmm. know what I mean um but I think as things are changing it feels nicer when I come here to be yeah. honest no that's like really real honestly yeah like it's the struggle <laughs> people are like oh come to LA and then you can work with like all the big producers and it's like well until no. you have something to show for yourself you can't like they won't answer your dms yeah you still have to climb the ladder so yeah that's cool though that you're like out of place where this feels like open arms yeah I mean it's not like <laughs> it's not like Benny Blanco is answering the door but like <laughs> it does feel like I feel a shift in the way that people you know more people are answering my dms and stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. no that's big yeah yeah thanks <laughs> well thanks for being here of course thanks for having me yeah i'm super excited about this like look at all these amazing people that have been here <laughs> i know sweetums and like like busy is from nashville i know her yeah ng i know her from like tiktok just people yeah that i totally recognize boyish i opened for them once in new york oh my god daniel nunnally he was uh in a program with me in nashville for upcoming artists so just wow. like a lot of connections on the wall which is really cool yeah these are like some of the most down-to-earth people like i've ever talked to it's a really cool thing hell yeah i feel very grateful hell yeah but yeah thanks for being on our little taste making talk show yeah, thanks for having me yeah we're gonna go through a three-course meal of Love new it. music and to start, I would love to know if listeners had never heard your music before, what's the first song you would serve up to them? Definitely All My Ex's Moms, which oh. is my most viral song to date. If you wanna know how my life is going, there's somebody close to you and she'll say that you've blown it. All my ex's moms, listen to my songs, yeah, they can't get enough, still keep in touch since I moved on. But that definitely, as soon as people hear that song, they like it um, and get into it and want to dance. Mm -hmm. um, and it also has the sassy personality, but also it's got the wholesome girl next door. It has the whole energy that I'm trying co to convey with my brand and like my persona. Yeah. All wrapped in one. So I think it's a great little taste of my whole vibe. Yeah. I feel like it's a good gateway because yeah. it's like... It, it has the taste of like, oh, I'm raunchy, but it's still like, but, it, but I'm just like, your mom loves me. <laughs> exactly. It's not like, you know, it's not like we are going to jail. We're like, <laughs> we're, you know, not yet. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're just like poking fun at, you know, at post breakup being a little bit, ooh, maybe this is like a little bit wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Did it come from a true experience? Yes. Mm. So I was on my way to LA for a writing camp uh, during AAPI month, mm -hmm. um, an Asian American camp. And uh, I got a DM from one of my ex's moms saying, no way. I love your music. I'm rooting for you. Just want you to know. <laughs> um, and I really appreciated it. Um, but, you know, it stuck with me. And when I got to my session, I brought it up as a topic um, for a song. And I was like, maybe we could write about how all my ex's moms love me. <laughs> and I was in the room with all boys who had never met me before. And they were all like crickets, like what? <laughs> um, and then they had me go through other ideas. And then finally, Will J, who was sitting beside me, who's an amazing writer was like, let's, let's try that all my ex's moms concept maybe. Awesome. Um, and then, yeah, 
uh, Dela had this beat that sounded, I thought at the time, too Dua Lipa for me, like too okay. disco dancey. Um, but I came up with the All My Exes Moms melody. Mm hmm. And then Will J came up with the mel- I kept singing the same melody over and over, like da na 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 da na 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 na, and he was like, no no no, go down. All my exes moms listen to my songs, yeah. and that made the whole song. From there, I was like, this is gonna be a hit, like because he added that, you know, um, and that's why co-writing is so important. Yeah, I was just gonna say it truly is like the people in the room sometimes. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, I really do. I love that song, and I love. It is like kind of the perfect like genre wise like gateway to your music too. Yeah. Because then they sort of like split off into other sounds as well. Totally. Yeah. Some go more rock Mm -hmm. and some go more straight pop. Um, But I do think it has elements of both in it. Yeah. And a little dancey, funky. So yeah. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Mm. What would you say like as we're we're entering album era, Big Mm. Mouth era? Yes. Yes. What are some of the influences you've been listening to a lot as you've been making this? Ooh, Obviously Sabrina Carpenter's new album. I love um, obviously Chapel, Mm -hmm. Chapel Rowan. Um, I think just in terms of my general sound, I've been, I've been inspired by Maisie Peters, Mimi Webb, um, Olivia Rodrigo, obviously Taylor Swift is the reason I moved to Nashville and started songwriting as with most female singer songwriters today. But yeah. Um, yeah, she's definitely the initial idol for me. Yeah. I mean, every single woman that you mentioned right there is someone who's been like kind of pushing the boundaries of what like women should say. Mm. And I feel like you're also contributing Thank to you. that, which yes, like, please, I, <laughs> I like, not to make it about me, but in my music, I've like literally, I just responded to a comment that said, Chapel Roan, Taylor Swift and Sabrina Carpenter are already having a horrible effect on music was like mm. the top comment on my post. Mm. And I'm like, in my opinion, they're like contributing to the good of music by well, saying shit like that. I mean, it, it, it has to start somewhere and you know, yeah. there has to be somebody who's ballsy enough to say it first. And yeah. these women are, and that's kind of takes me into my next song that I was going to bring up. Okay, please <laughs> do. But, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know how this works. Do you want me to like, is it younger guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so for the main course, yeah, please. Uh, I would <laughs> probably over. do my song younger guys. I feel like, uh, that encompasses who I am today. And, it's basically, you know, a take on how in dating in society, we have been taught that women are supposed to date men who are older than them. And, you know, I think throughout my dating history in my 20s, I've had crushes or met men out in public that I didn't know how old they were. And then I found out they were younger than me. And then it's like a little embarrassing. And I'm like, why is that embarrassing? Shouldn't like, be. It shouldn't be. There's no reason for that to be. We're basically the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, like it's just a f- couple years. And so I wanted to, you know, change that narrative by writing a song about it. And I've gotten so much hate online about it. Yeah. um, In the comments from people who are just unable to expand their way of thinking pretty much. But it just takes one person to say it for then people to start thinking about it. And then like another person will say it and another person and then it will be more normalized in society. Yeah. And there are like for every few comments that are like, what the fuck are you saying? There's the people that are like, oh, my God, thank you for saying this. Like, I've been thinking this. Definitely, I think in the beginning, when I first launched the song, it was mainly women who were like, I totally relate. I know exactly what you're trying to say. Yeah. And then it got the Internet took it and it became <laughs> and it was like all young kids who don't even understand dating i would say you don't even know what you're talking (laughs) about yet (laughs) like your brain's not fully developed yet i'm sorry (laughs) um and like men who feel you know like i'm jabbing at them Mm -hmm. when really i'm hyping you up like (laughs) i'm saying if you're younger than me we could date like yeah. Isn't that a good thing? I'm leaving I, the door open yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm helping you out. So really, I don't understand what the problem is here. But um, yeah, 
So it's been very interesting. I, I don't know how much we want to talk about this, but I honestly have questions. Go for it. Yeah. Genu- like from, from a musician's perspective, who's like now receiving this backlash, but also just like as a person, like how does it feel to receive so much of that? Like negative it's, speak horrible <laughs> yeah i i literally got a dm from a fellow artist the other day and was like hey i i see you get like a lot of hate comments on this song i'm just curious like if you have any tips or like mm-hmm. how does that make you feel i'm like it's horrible for me like yeah i'm a normal human being if people are saying mean things about me and to me i'm going to feel sad and that's just it and unfortunately it did cause me to stop posting the song for a little bit i like yeah stepped back from posting TikToks about it because of that. And now I regret it because I'm like, the song is doing well. Every time I post it, it's going viral because of this controversy. And I just kind of decided to stop reading the comments because this song speaks for itself. It is doing well every time I post it. Why am I going like, at some point you have to decide like what your priority is. Mm Mm-hmm. And my priority is to make this a career and for people to hear my music and not to worry about people who don't know me or don't understand me or, or the song. Um, yeah, kind of like the same thing when TikTok came out and people were like, I'm not going to do that too cringy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, 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 I'm doing this because I missed the boat with YouTube. I'm not missing the boat with TikTok. And that has helped me so much immensely. Like I was able to grow the platform, grow on the platform before everyone else that hopped on yeah, kudos to you dude and so i kind of equate it to that like yeah it's like you just have to understand what you're getting into yeah. and you know and like you know what you meant with the song you wrote a good song your words can't be misconstrued unless people like really want to read into it the wrong way right i mean the people who are misconstruing it are people who aren't hearing the full song and are only hearing a snippet yeah, that and, you strategically posted to get them to get mad about it. Right. I mean, it's just, I, it's just so interesting. But yeah, I don't know. It just shows you how many different thinking people there are in the world. Yeah. And like the big thing that I take away from it is like, why is it so wrong that a woman would say that? I That's a lot of people's argument is like, imagine if a man said this uh men date younger women all the time that's literally the point of the song we literally have like the leonardo (laughs) dicaprio effect like that is so largely accepted yeah it's like you're missing the whole point of the song yeah and you're not thinking critically if you're not getting that i'm sorry yeah (laughs) you know also i think some of it's like a compliment to you because they probably think you're like 21 (laughs) that is another thing is people think i'm like 18 and i'm like (laughs) bruh I'm 29, but (laughs) like you're talking about like 24 year olds. Right, exactly. Either way, like even when I was in high school and I had a crush, if I was like 16 and I had a crush on someone who was 15, it was still embarrassing. So I think it relates to any stage of life. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think it's getting people talking. It's getting people talking and like from an outsider's perspective, when I look at your page, like you're not letting them get to you and like you're still posting amazing content. Thanks. So yeah, I I know that it must hurt. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, whatever. That's like what I've, this is the path I've chosen and I've decided that luckily I'm old enough that I'm secure in myself. I've spent many years growing into this person that I love. And I think if I was younger, and more insecure, it would be way worse. But because I know who I am, I know what I'm trying to say. I know I'm not saying anything bad. I know that I was very intelligent when I wrote this song. Yeah. I, it, the hate comments, you know, don't really matter at the end of the day. No, no, it's rooted in you. Mm -hmm. And you have so much other great music coming out. Thanks. So I'd love to hear about the Big Mouth EP, not EP, album. Yeah. It is the big thing. Yeah. So the album comes out October 4th. Um, By the time this airs, it'll be out. (laughs) Um, But I'm super excited. It's got 11 tracks on it. Um, And if you got the CD or the vinyl, you get three bonus tracks. So 14 total and 14 is my lucky number. So that's why I really wanted to strive for 14. Um, but yeah, there'll be three new songs that come out with the album on the fourth. Um, one of which is 
a song that I really, really love. And every time I play it for people, they are like, that's a really interesting song to them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called Stepping Stone. And it's about um, my ex who got engaged. And when I found out from the internet, mm -hmm. as we all find out from the internet, um, <laughs> that he was engaged and now he's married. Um, and so it's a song about realizing that I was, I was the girl before the girl he married, yeah. that you know I was just a stepping stone for him to the rest of his life. Uh, and I'm hoping that one day he'll just be a stepping stone for me. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. What sort of like perspective does it take on that? Like, is it, is it like a self deprecating like stepping stone? Is it like, um, I think it's just kind of like, uh, sad, <laughs> <laughs> like you found it and I'm still searching. Sure. That sucks. Yeah. And it's been a long time. It's about my college ex. So okay. I think when you're younger, you feel like finding love is going to be so easy, especially when you're in school and you have crushes mm -hmm. on different people all the time because you're surrounded by people. And then you get older and you're like, wait, it's so difficult to find a connection with people, like a true connection with somebody. Yeah. Cause where are you seeing new people? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, yeah. And in adulthood, it's mm -hmm. just like so much more difficult and you can go years without a crush, without dating anyone. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that we're like told about when we're, when you're, we're younger, I feel like. Yeah. Um, that's a huge one. That's one that I'm like, I'm growing into. Yeah. How in old my are you? 20s. I'm 23. Oh, you're so young. <laughs> you have so much time. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, he's the only person I've ever loved and mm -hmm. like I've dated multiple people and never gotten to that stage. So it's, it's like terrifying. Like what if I never love again? Like, right. What if that was it? And he found it again and I never will. So that's kind of what the song is about. I love that. It's Thanks. also, I think it's special that you're writing it uh, however many years, like after the fact. I think that like, <laughs> not not a dig at all. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I think it makes it like more observant and like reflective in totally. a lot of ways. I feel like this album actually was like closure for me on that whole relationship because yeah. The album basically talks about my entire 20s. So it starts with our breakup and then goes through me like growing as a person yeah. and creating music and dating people that were wrong for me and breaking up and staying in touch with their ex their moms, <laughs> with my ex's moms and dating guys yeah. who are younger than me. And I don't want to move to LA, do I? Blah, blah. So it's all songs about that. And then it ends with me finding out he's engaged. And then the final song is basically like a thank you to him because you taught me that love does exist. So it ends on a hopeful note that like, I'll okay. find it again. So yeah, I mean, it does in a way feel like I'm closing the chapter on my twenties with this album as well. Yeah. Did you mean to like write all of these songs as an album or did it sort of like find its own storyline? I got to a point I think like last year where I had a bunch of songs I really liked at one time and that never happens. Mm -hmm. Like usually I write a song, I love it, I put it out. I write a song, I love it, I put it out. Kind of just like singles. And then at the end, okay, it's an EP. Yeah. But this time I felt like I had gotten to a place in my songwriting that I was writing songs consistently that I really liked, which was very not usual for me. And yeah. so I was like, I think it's time I'm getting closer to 30. Like, let's go for it. Let's give it our all. Um, and let's make an album. Like, let's not wait for a record label deal or anything like that. Like, let's just do it ourselves. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're doing. And it feels like the right move and it feels really exciting. It's paying off too. Thanks. Yeah. And I mean, speaking on being independent, Mm -hmm. I have to ask about the short film that you just told me about. Yeah. So I'm making a short film in conjunction with the album and it uses all the songs to tell the story um, mm -hmm. of basically my last few years and um, the creation of these songs, like what inspired these songs pretty much. So yeah. we're putting a story to them all on the screen. Um, and I edit and direct all my music videos. So doing a larger project like this was super exciting for me very stressful. But yeah. <laughs> I just told you that I was on the plane to LA, like finishing the visual effects 
on my computer in After Effects for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think hopefully it'll be really rewarding. We're gonna um, anyone who buys a VIP package for the tour will get to watch it with me. Um, we're gonna bring like a projector screen and sit on blankets and hang out and watch it together and. And then we'll submit it for some festivals and stuff. But yeah. it's cool to have, I think it's always important for me to have visual aspects to my songs because they're so much more than just something you hear. Like I always picture things when I listen to music and mm-hmm. I, I love to give visuals to my music. Yeah, I, I think it's a really exciting like time capsule too to be able to look back on for the album totally. yeah and all like my best friends in nashville are in it like acting with me Sweet. so i just think it's like a really beautiful personal piece as well that like i'll be able to show my kids and stuff like that like this yeah. was your mom when she was in her <laughs> 20s this is what she did with her time um <laughs> but um yeah so i'm really excited about it it's coming together and hopefully everybody enjoys it I'm sure they will. Thanks. I would love to know like when film became a part of your life. Like, did you just learn this like for your music? Yeah, I, so in high school, senior year, I did a film class and I loved it. And um, we did like a featured project at the end of the year. And my teacher was like, you have a gift at this, like you should really pursue this. But I knew music was kind of the path I was going to be taking. Sure. So when I went to college, I minored in film and I majored in music. Wow. And then when I moved to Nashville, I became a video editor at um, a record label. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I combined the two. At that time I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to be like an artist. Maybe I can just like do it for fun on the side and like I have to get a big girl job and work at a record label and that's just my life path. But obviously I was doing that by day and then at night still doing music and music grew to the point where I was able to quit that job. But so exciting. Yeah. Um, and with TikTok coming, it just like all felt like it fell into place, but yeah, basically I've always done video and so it's cool to have it be, it's a part of this final project here too. Yeah. That is like such a, like, I don't know, just like the way that you took two talents and made them a thing and now they've made each other like I don't know, successful. It's Thank you. Yeah, I mean, once content creation became a thing, I was like, this is my calling right here. It's like putting t- my two loves together, yeah. kind of. Um, and content creation is so much harder than people really give you credit for. Y- content creation is a whole job in itself. Like, yeah. if you look at on my phone every day, <laughs> I have scheduled the TikTok I'm going to post and like the time I'm posting it, like for weeks. So I oh. know every day what TikTok idea is going to be posted, whether it's already edited or I'm going to edit it that day Mm -hmm. to be decided. But I know what the concept is going to be. And obviously something's changed. Like there's a trend going and I have to change that TikTok, but I'll move it to two weeks from today. But like I have the concepts laid out. Wow. That's like, that's really admirable. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's, yeah. I mean, I get a lot of like comments on how consistent I am and it's not by luck. It's all pre-planned. Like, you know, it's very meticulous for sure. I mean that like, it's the work you put into it that has made you grow this much. So thanks. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I I always have said like, I would never want to be an overnight success. I want people to see the behind the scenes. I want people to see how much work goes into it. Yeah. So that like when I make it one day, people are like, okay, she deserves it. She put in the work. It's not like, oh, yeah. that was luck. That was a stroke of <laughs> this is not luck. This is People hard love work. To say that. <laughs> yeah. The Nepo baby, the industry plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the industry plan comments are so interesting. I'm like, y'all just are so removed from what's happening to even understand that's not even possible. <laughs> I know. And you just you can't even take it personally. Yeah. But it's a compliment. Yeah. They're like, wow, you came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. You think I've got my stuff together enough that I can be an industry plant? Hell yeah. <laughs> when did music start for you? I'm like working backwards. Sorry. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started singing when I was little and I told my mom when I was like seven years old that I wanted to be a singer. Oh, so. And luckily she took it seriously. Yeah. Uh, and took me to this audition uh, in... I lived near New York City growing up. Oh, where? Very conveniently. Uh, New Jersey, uh, Bergen County. 
Okay. I grew up in Mercer County. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of people in that area who were doing like Broadway musicals, commercial yeah. auditions, stuff like that in, in New York City. And totally. so I kind of started doing that whole thing growing up and voice lessons and acting lessons and dance lessons, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but then when I discovered Taylor Swift when I was 13, I was like, oh, I can be on the radio. I can write pop music. I don't have to like sing show tunes, which was, I thought at the time, the only way to sing was to do show tunes. Yeah. Um, but I just, I didn't have the love for it. Like other people did other kids that I saw. Yeah. Um, but pop music, I always felt like my voice was called more towards that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so then I started guitar lessons, writing songs, went to college for it. And then I moved to Nashville. Where did you go to school? Elon University in okay. North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. And that's the same place my roommate went, Rosemary Joquin, and she oh, is cool. an artist who is going on tour with me. She's opening for me. Oh, uh, stop. Yeah. So we have we met uh, in my acapella group in college. Um, nice. And she was also in the same major as me. But yeah, we both moved to Nashville, and now she's going to open for me on tour, which I'm really excited about. Wow, that's so serendipitous. <laughs> I know. It's just so cute. Like, we've both been in Nashville the last, like, six, seven years posting our TikToks together, filming for each other and yeah. supporting each other, going to each other's shows. And now we get to do this together. It'll, it'll feel like home on the road, which will be great. That's great. Mm -hmm. And Nashville feels like home now. You think you'll stay there? Oh, I love Nashville. Yeah. That's um, I, I feel like it's kind of similar to Jersey. Have you been to Nashville? I haven't. I was just okay. going to say, yeah. It's like very suburbia vibes and Ooh. then like the cities nearby. Like you could go to Broadway whenever you want. It's just closer than New York City. But yeah, I like that it feels like homey, down to earth, community vibe. That's like the whole, that's why people love Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like almost afraid to check it out at this point because like I'm settled into LA. Yeah. And I'm scared. How to long have you been here? I've been here two years. You kind of give me Nashville vibes. Oh, very God. like. <laughs> no. It's, I think it's a good thing. It's yeah. like someone who's down to earth and like you. chill and a good, good hearted human. <laughs> I think <laughs> LA is, is really tough. It's yeah. yeah. Not to say LA is not like that. I've met so many nice people here. There's great people here. I think the barrier of entry is really, really high for sure. And it's just like, people don't really want you to be a part of their group. Totally. Nashville is a yeah. little bit more arms open. Yeah. There is still a little bit of like a work a little harder to get into this group, sure. but it's, a, I think it's less than LA. I yeah. think it's still the music industry. Of course. So. And people want to protect what they've built up and what they had to go through. They want you to also go through the same hoops and stuff. So I'll I, never understand that. I, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to check it out. I will eventually D definitely do. And then hit me up when you do. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so would you say stepping stone was like our dessert track or was yeah. there? Another? Yeah. I would say stepping stone. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Exciting. Um, and I'm just, I'm excited for people to hear. It. I think the bridge is very Olivia Rodrigo inspired, Love. um, a little shouty moment. <laughs> Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm excited uh, to start promoting these last three songs on socials. I haven't done it yet. So yeah. Oh, cool. I'll be looking up. Yay. Well, I have a couple of closing questions. Yeah. I would love to know if your music was a candle, what it would smell like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Probably like sweet, sugary, <laughs> girly, <laughs> like, uh, sunshine rainbows and flowers <laughs> <laughs> i like got the image of like when you walk into victoria's secret it smells like, yeah, like yes pink. i was i was almost gonna say like did you ever have taylor swift wonderstruck no <laughs> the but purple bottle <laughs> that was like my go-to perfume growing up Aww. and it was kind of like a sweet girly scent that i loved um, yeah. so probably maybe like that <laughs> wow i bet someone's selling that on the internet for a million dollars oh my <laughs> i wish i still had it it, yeah. was, it smelled so good. Anyway. Cute. <laughs> I'd also love to know what your favorite sound is right now that's not music related, like life sound. Oh my, that's such a cool question. Thanks. <laughs> so I actually, for a time, was like, these are my favorite sounds. This is so weird. <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, the crunching of leaves, like fall leaves when you're walking on them. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and also like biting lettuce like oh or celery celery i'm sorry yeah yeah um they're both kind of similar sounds like crunching sounds yeah and that was before i realized how much i love asmr <laughs> as well i don't know if you watch them to go to sleep i'm getting into it okay 
for a time I was like, that's so weird. Now I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. I love to watch them before going to bed. It just like calms me. What kind do you watch? Lately, I've been on a kick of this girl who plays with girl's hair. Wait, okay. Have you been seeing that? I haven't seen her yet, but Giselle, who's usually behind the camera, she, I think, was on that girl's show. What? I'm like 99 She got her hair, sure. like, like Phoebe with? Bridgers did it too, right? No. Okay, different girl. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but who's this? I'll show you They her. do celebrities? I think so. Okay, I think this yeah. girl's just like a regular girl. She does like regular <laughs> girls, not celebrities. <laughs> but she like... I don't know if, did you go to public school? Mm -hmm. Did you ever get like your hair checked for lice? Oh and yeah. And they had like the chopsticks. Yeah. She's like doing that. Like <gasps> that was a treat. <laughs> like the day you came in to get your hair checked for lice, that was like all, everything to me. Yeah. Cause I was just like, how long can I sit here and have her play with my hair? Literally. Um, but yeah, it's funny because I would never think watching someone else's hair getting played with would make me feel good, but it does. It does. It makes you feel like it's your hair. Yeah. There's this one girl on TikTok and she has this like brush. I wonder if it's the same girl and she'll like brush the girl's hair like upside down almost. Wait, yeah. Is it her? Maybe, yeah. She has okay. like a, it's like a white, um, it's like a rectangular brush with like long bristles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe okay. we are talking about the same girl. Okay. I think that's a different girl than the other girl, oh, okay. but okay. I see this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I think I'm talking about. Amazing. Does she have these like green nails? Yes. Yes. <laughs> They're like um, press on nails or yeah. not press on. They're like, it's just like the outline of the nail sort of. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think that's for, um, I think like, is it like halal? Is that what it's called? Or something. They can't wear actual like nails. Acrylics. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they made these nails that you can put on and this girl is wearing them. And they're like objectively like cooler and prettier than like acrylics. So cool. Yeah. They have like the gold uh -huh. piece. <laughs> okay. We're definitely watching the I same thing. This. I have one of those saved on my TikTok, and every once in a while I'm like, Hmm, I'm anxious. Like, <laughs> let me go find that one. Yeah. It just like soothes me. Yeah. I'm, it's not even a guilty pleasure. I'm just telling you up front straight up <laughs> i love it <laughs> i was also i was like a little bit of a hater of it for a second i was like that's so weird i think we all were but then yeah. we all came to our senses yeah but then it feels like when you were in like middle school and you'd like ask your friend to braid your hair and like yes yeah exactly exactly yes it's perfect mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. amazing so all the power to those people who are making see those people did something that other people thought was cringy at the time and, and now, paid we're, off. now we're all on board and it's paid off. So. They are paying their bills playing with people's hair. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. I want to find, like, I want to befriend one. So I'm ready to pay it. her big bucks <laughs> to play with my hair. I'm literally. ready to find her and go there. So An hour session. Yes. yes. <laughs> literally. How many hours can I sit here, actually? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, my final question mm. is who are your ones to watch? Who are you listening to oh, that I should listen gosh. to? Uh, my roommate, Rosemary Joaquin. Mm-hmm is making incredible music. Um, Mary Moore, another friend of mine, and Karen Hardy. I'm shouting out all my friends Good, who are coming on tour with me, actually. Um, I saw Maude Latour on your wall. Mm -hmm. Her music is so sick. Sugar Water is like, oh, life changing. Yeah, I, yeah, she just like has such cool, unique sounds. Like I feel like she's always ahead of the wave. Yeah. Really, really cool. But she also seems like a regular girl. Like she could just be she our friend, is. which is really cool. Yeah. I love that. Just a creative person. Mm -hmm. Really cool um upsall yeah she's yeah. so talented i love seeing her videos where she's like make my song in 60 seconds with me like mm -hmm. she you can tell that she is so musically inclined and like is is the creative behind her songs yeah mm -hmm. and like another genuine soul like yeah. the nicest person totally have you had her on this mm -hmm. okay cool and uh, i don't do you know zoe co I don't I met her I met oh her last gosh. time I was in LA but we're not like that close, but we're like social media friends but yeah. yeah her new stuff is so good agreed and she's opening for Upsall right now on yes. tour yeah. so oh. yeah I think Upsall wrote one of her songs uh I would yeah Pink Noise or something yeah like, I'm, that makes sense yeah so I think that's the connection there but yeah Cute. Zoe's doing great stuff and yeah oh yeah another woman who's like just like pushing boundaries and, totally yeah. I totally. love to cross a line. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We're all crossing our own like types of lines, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. It's we're like, there's really a wave of women who are doing it. So, I mean, I feel like all the top pop stars right now are women. Yeah. Chapel, Sabrina, mm -hmm. Taylor. And I think that there's a reason for that. For Fuck sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's the note to end on. <laughs> That's the note to end on. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Abby. I, this was so fun. 
Yay. You're a great interviewer, so thanks. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yay. Once again, this is Once to Watch Chef's Choice. I'm Abby Kenna, and this is Brooke Alex. Whoop, whoop. Listen to Big Mouth. Yay. <laughs>